Well, I don't know if you've heard this. Apparently red hair is going extinct because of climate change. Have you heard that? I know, I was shocked. I thought it was because nobody was having sex with us. It's nice... <laughs> it's nice to know that climate change is the real culprit, but... You know, when I heard that, it really shocked me. It left me reeling. Where does that leave red-headed people? What are we? A dying breed. And I realised what we are is the last great mythical beast of the British Isles. You know, griffins, unicorns, the gingers. That's the way things are moving. And I, I envy you, the non-gingers. Look at you, you're young, you're not ginger, you've got your whole life ahead of you. You're going to be able to say one day to your great-great-grandchildren, you know, I saw one once. <laughs> a live ginger. It'd blow their minds. Ah, oh, what was it? What was it like? Are the stories true? <laughs> it was indescribably beautiful. I saw it there with the rays of sun glinting in its copper mane as it gambled about unsteadily on a pair of milk bottle legs. <laughs> Pausing just momentarily to ritualistically apply high factor sun cream. <laughs> and then children, it looked up at me and our eyes met and we shared a magical moment. And then it ran off into the shade. And I shouted, ginger pubes, which was considered the height of amusement at the time. After you've been together a long time, we've been together nearly 18 years, you know each other so well, like we can finish each other's sentences. You know, like my husband will start talking and I'll just jump in with, oh, shut the f up, will you? Jesus. Because <laughs> it's always something like, I think by the time he gets to the end of the sentence, I won't need to know what he's said. <laughs> Honestly, it'd be something to do with downloading music that I'm not interested in. And I know it's the same for men. I know we tell you stuff and you don't care about it at all. Because women are very interested in other people, other people's emotions, other people's lives. As far as I work out, men, you don't give a shit about other people, do you? Because <laughs> sometimes I'll be telling my husband stuff about my friends and that, and I can see him just looking at me like, I love you dearly, but please stop telling me about the emotional problems of your friends. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. It's nice being here in Scotland. Um, I love Scotland because you guys can communicate solely in vowels. <laughs> Have you noticed that? E, e, I, o, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Even, even when I'm here, sometimes I, I just drift into the accent by, by accident. I'll just be in a coffee shop halfway through. I'm like, hello there, mate. Can I have a caramel frappuccino? Just... <laughs> See, there's a difference between you and I, and it's mainly in our erections, right? <laughs> it is. Because a 23-year-old erection and a 45-year-old erection, they're not the same thing. And the main difference is, Ali, a 23-year-old erection will wait while you get a condom. Mona? Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can go to the drawer, get a condom, he's still there waiting for you when you get back, yeah. I envy you. You don't have to keep tending to it while you're away, do you? Honey, you better start whispering sweet nothings because I can't find these <laughs> things. You don't have to keep grinding it into the mattress just to keep it alive. None of that. I don't want you 23. A 23 year old erection will wait while you get dressed and go to the shops to buy condoms. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> 45 year old erection is a far less reliable beast. 45-year-old directions like, why have we stopped? <laughs> I didn't want to do this in the first place. <laughs> you convinced me it was a good idea. And just as I'm getting into my stride, we've stopped. I'm going back to me nap. <laughs> you are hitting, hitting me isn't going to help. The problem is, as with any kind of inequality, the deck is stacked and we pretend it's questions of priorities that prevent outcomes from being different. The number of times I've heard, oh, you're concerned about not getting a flat, but you're more than happy to spend three pounds on one of your fancy coffees, aren't you, right? Oh, you'll never get a flat, but you'll spend three pounds on one of your fancy coffees. Bruv, that's because you bought all the three pound houses. <laughs> there are a few of those left. I'd prioritize that over a macchiato, sure. Uh, that is not the world we live in. Guys, I currently, as an individual, earn more than both my parents did put together in real terms when they bought a four-bedroom detached house in London 22 years ago. The problem is my fondness for brunch. <laughs> sure. 
drop. Um, and I think like the internet is the elephant in most rooms, you know, like when you go on a Tinder date and you have to pretend that you've not stalked him to within an inch of his life and you don't know more about him than he knows about himself. <laughs> I'm so sorry if this is a gross question, but like, what do you do? Oh no, that's fine. Um, I work in advertising. Yeah, I know because I've been on your LinkedIn. I can see you've been at your company for the last two years and before that you interned there for a year, which makes me think you're from a rich family to be able to subsidize you living in London, which on the one hand is good. On the other hand, I don't really like privilege and also I don't really agree with the principles of advertising, like trying to persuade people to buy things that they don't necessarily need, which makes me wonder whether or not you have a social conscience. But then when I went to your company's website, I could see you've done a lot of work with, with the Save the Children, which is really nice and your photo on the website's really nice and your LinkedIn photo is really nice and your three public profile pictures on Facebook is are really nice and even though your Instagram's private when I screenshot it and zoomed up to the top left hand corner that photo was really nice too <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> I'm 30 I'm at that point in my life I, I got fat this year which I wasn't expecting I just I really wasn't I, I was 29 I looked alright I turned 30 this happened it's very weird when you get fat as a man when you weren't expecting it you know there's a few signs you can look out for. For any men who are worried about it, there are some signs you can watch out for. The first one I noticed is the first time you catch yourself running down the stairs like this. <laughs> That's a rough one. <laughs> if you're brushing your teeth as a man with no t-shirt on and you spit toothpaste out and it lands on your own tit. <laughs> buy a juicer. Because <laughs> early this year, for the first time in my life, I watched Escape to the Country. <laughs> Aspirationally rather than ironically. <laughs> On earlier watches, it was just to laugh at the rich people. But now, I tell you what, I think, I think I wanna live in a converted farmhouse more more than I want peace in the Middle East. <laughs> you might judge me, you might judge me, but do you know how amazing original wood beams look? Mm. <laughs> I, need, I need a new Tinder bio. Uh, the problem is I hate what people put in their Tinder bios because they just like to put meaningless bullshit phrases. Here are my three least favorite Tinder tag lines. The first goes like this. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What does that even mean? That is just below average wordplay disguised as wisdom. <laughs> it's just a double meaning. Anyone could do that. You could do that with anything. Uh, keep your eye on the time. That's why they call it a watch. <laughs> Easy. My second least favorite goes like this. It goes, we don't stop playing because we get old. We get old because we stop playing. They just switch the words around. That's not smart. That's like if a doctor came out and said, he didn't stop breathing because he died. He died because he stopped breathing. <laughs> my least favorite goes like this. You might've heard this before. It's a quote. It goes, if you can't handle me at my worst, you sure as hell don't deserve me at my best. I saw seven girls with that exact same tagline. I still swipe right to all of them though. They may not be the girls I deserve, but they are the ones I need right now. <laughs> Basically, what that quote means is if you're, good enough, if you're good enough at something, you could just afford to be a total dick. Imagine if Einstein subscribed to that. I don't know. He went around flinging his feces at everyone in the street. You couldn't do anything about it. You couldn't do anything about it because Einstein was a great man. He's done a lot for this world. If you can't handle Einstein's excrement, you don't deserve his theory of relativity. I, I had to be inducted to this gym. I've never been inducted into anything in my life. I'm just sort of in the corner of this gym waiting to be induced. And then there's all these other guys who've all got like massive top halves and like tiny withered legs. Like very triangular shaped, all just staring at me like angry bunting. And then I'm just like here, just regretting every life choice I've ever made. Thinking that I shouldn't have worn this gym skirt. This is not an option. <laughs> and then one of them, who was my personal trainer, dead big, dead bald, comes over, he taps me on the shoulder. I turn around, he goes, ah, I thought you were gonna be a bird. I don't really know what to say in those situations. So I just went, oh, I can be whoever you want me to be. <laughs>